Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's time to get spooky with an October TBR. Okay, you guys know it's spooky season, so I am prioritizing the books that I feel like I wouldn't read any other time of the year, and it really is truly a spooky season. I'm also going to be structuring this TBR with must-reads and potentials. This way I have like a priority TBR that's shorter than other options that I may potentially reach for. I'm going to try structuring my TBRs like this for a few months and see how I like it, but I like the idea that it prioritizes like a small number of books and then the other ones are just kind of like extra, so I can still make long TBRs but feel accomplished as long as I get those must-reads done, so... We're gonna try that out. The first must read for me is, is a book that I'm actually about to start because I'm just about to do sprints with Tori on her channel. Look at how shiny she is. I love it. And this is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. It's their YA debut and everything about this just seems like it is speaking to my soul. And I know that Ava has like beautiful writing even though I haven't read anything by them yet. I just I'm already in love with it. Because it involves fairy tales and I have a weakness for fairy tales. I love fairy tale retellings. Um, I took a whole class on fairy tales writing seminar. You just had to take your writing seminar as a freshman. Mine was on fairy tales and it was so, so cool. I really loved taking that class. And of course, I like to incorporate it into my reading. So we follow Effie, who has always believed in fairy tales, and she kind of has this battered copy of the fairy king that she brings everywhere with her and she sees the fairy king in her dreams. Then the author of that book, <clears throat> their family, announces a contest to redesign that person's estate and Effie is currently in architecture college and it's like this manor that's about to crumble into the sea yes I love that like I don't know there's something about the beach in like a non-summer season that I just love like the aesthetic of so we have this manor crumbling into the sea and Effie and her rival Preston are kind of like competing there and Preston is also trying to prove to Effie that her favorite author is a fraud and yeah they just like kind of discover dark forces in the house I mean <laughs> everything about this the combination of fairy tales architecture like academia um rivals to lovers it's just calling to my soul. Look at this beautiful, beautiful cover. I am obsessed. I am obsessed and I'm so excited. I'm literally about to start this when I finish filming this video. So this is the first one on my must read TBR. Next on my must read TBR is a carryover from September and that is House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson. I must have talked about this book like 20 times on my channel this month, but I don't care. I hope I love it because I keep talking about it. Um, I also had Juniper and Thorn was the only other book that was on my September TBR that I did not get to. But I'm kind of replacing that with The Study and Drowning by Ava Reed because I feel like Juniper and Thorn is, while yes, like gothic horror, it's not like specifically like I want to read this, like I need to read this during spooky season or I'm not going to read it at all. So you may see that book later in the TBR. But yes, this is definitely one that I want to carry over from September. And we follow Marion Shaw. She's kind of raised in the slums and she one day comes across a advertisement for a blood maiden because the upper echelons of the society drink blood and then she gets drawn into countess lisavette's circle and becomes her favored blood maiden and then the ancient walls of house of hunger hide even more ancient secrets and she gets thrust into a game of cat and mouse so love that vampires sapphic this this is getting read this month speaking of Savvy Vampires. Next on my must read list is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson, the tagline being Desire, Obsession, and Control. And this is written as letters from Constanza, and she is the first bride of Dracula. Yes, like the Dracula from the book. Also, like there are also other brides, so she's like in a harem of sorts, and it's kind of her dealing with the emotional abuse of this marriage and finding solace in the other brides of Dracula. So yes. And it's really interesting because it's written like as letters to Dracula so it says like you, 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 which I think is a really interesting use of um, pronoun? Not pronoun. Tense? Form? You know when it's like first person, third person, it's second person. Yeah. I am excited and I think it's really cool. Like I love when there's like blank pages that are also used as a literary device. It just it looks like a really really good read. I've literally only heard people say good things about this book and so I'm really excited to finally read it myself. Then next is Library of Shadows by Rachel Moore. You'll notice that a lot of these on my must read list 
are newer releases and this is because i want to try to read books as i purchase them but then also you know incorporate some backlist in here too because i have a lot of books that i've purchased and have yet to read but that's just the life of a reader anyways i love reading new releases i think it's really fun to just keep up with the current trends and so yeah i just got this one it is another really shiny book but i actually love it and i think this is going to be a good palette cleanser between all of like the darker heavier stuff but still the spooky season mood because it just seems cute. It's um, It takes place at Bradcliffe Pref, which is the third most haunted school in America. And we have Esty and she kind of goes there because her father went there and she wants to discover more about her father. But when she's there, the library is haunted by this ghost that is this hot boy. And she may or may not fall in love with the ghost. And it's kind of like murder mystery ghost found family. And I love that. And I just love like cute little rom-com but ghosty and also just like the vibe of spooky meets lighthearted. I love that. I'm so excited and I can't wait to read this. I just feel like I already know I'm going to be like smiling and giggling while I read this book. And then the last on my must read list is Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. You guys know Carrie Maniscalco is my girl. She is one of my autobi authors and I've read literally everything she's ever released literally my shrine to Carrie Magis Galco. Um, I don't know where I'm gonna keep putting her books because I have a lot of my autobi author girlies on the shelves. Um, but yeah, she has a lot of books. Anyways, so we have, oh boy. This is Kingdom of the Wicked. It's her trilogy following Wrath, who is a prince of hell, and Amelia, who is this mortal witch on this very um, Italian-inspired medieval kind of setting okay so they had their whole story arc it was amazing literally one of my favorite trilogies i love them so much and i love all the demon princes of hell which is so exciting because now they're each getting their own books and it is fully adult so what kind of ended up happening with the kingdom of the wicked trilogy is it started ya and then it just like slowly like evolved into like an adult book with sexual content um, so now she's fully publishing an adult and I'm very happy that both Carrie Maniscalco and the publishing house made that decision because now I think she can tell these stories to the fullest extent of their love stories and there will be sexual content in them and also demon princes like their fullest their uh, you know things are gonna get spicy. This next one is following Prince Envy. Oh my god I love him and Camille and apparently there are Fae lands too. I was looking in the map. I just like every year on the dot when the new Carrie Maniscalco book drops like I have been reading it and I also highly recommend checking out her Stalking Jack the Ripper series which is why strictly YA but still so so good and it's got like historic murder mystery vibes and it's such also such a great romance in that one uh yeah but I adore her I adore her and I'm very excited okay so all I really know about this is it's about Envy and Camille who is an artist and I kind of want to go in super blind and have that be that okay and then lastly on my must read list is an audiobook called all the dead light down by Kyrie mccauley and in this one we follow marin her family has just died and her mother's friend was this famous horror novelist and invites her to kind of live in with her and be a nanny but the two little girls are like terrible and they do not make marin's life easy and then the eldest daughter comes back from boarding school and they start to feel things for one another but then of course there is something wrong with the house i'm really excited i think the audiobook is going to be very good for this one okay now getting on to my potentials these are books that i'm thinking about picking up but they're not on my must read list just because i want to really prioritize getting to those ones and then these ones depending on my mood i might pick up or not or you might see them on later tbrs as must reads because that's just how life works. The first of the potentials is The Scarlet Veil by Shelby Maharin, and this is a follow-up to Serpent and Dove trilogy taking place in the same world, but now we have vampires, and we follow Celie, who is now engaged to Jean-Luc, and she is the first ever huntress in this world, so they um, hunt evil creatures, and it's kind of like being a priest, if that makes sense. Uh, it would make more sense if you read the original trilogy, right? But anyways, okay, so we follow Celie. She's a side character in the first trilogy, and now she's a huntress. And she basically gets captured by vampires. And, like, everyone is trying to shield her from this, even though she is a huntress. And 
some one from the dark is coming for her so i'm really intrigued to see if this is going to be a romance between her and the vampire or if she's going to stay with her fiance jean-luc because i forgot how gods and monsters like ended with them um in particular but yeah i mean I love this world. It's like very France inspired and I'm so excited for Sheldon Hearn's take on vampires because I love the witch and witch hunter dynamic in Serpent and Dove. Great trilogy. And um, she's definitely an author that knows how to pack an emotional punch because the ending of Blood and Honey made me cry. The next potential is Vampires of El Norte by Eliz... The next potential is Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas. I literally just finished the Hacienda and loved it. So I really need to get my hands on Vampires of El Norte and then I would potentially read it this month. But I've heard it described as like a western horror with vampires set on the Texas-Mexico border. And everything about that is just wonderful and Isabel Cañas's writing is so so beautiful. There are so many things I underlined in the Hacienda because her writing is just so gorgeous and I feel like she really mixes beautiful prose with like yearning angsty romance and a really intriguing historical setting. We follow Nina and Nestor and Nina was attacked by a vampire when she was a child and Nestor thinks that she died so he has kind of moved on and then they're reunited when the United States attacks Mexico and they have to kind of face the threat of vampires together. I mean it just sounds like it's gonna be great. I know Isabel Cañas does horror really well, so I'm intrigued to see the vampires be like the enemy instead of like the one that the main girlie falls in love with, you know? But I, I like vampires either way, but I think it'll be good. The next potential is Bittersweet in the Hollow by Kate Pearsall, and we follow a woman in the Appalachian Mountains, and Lyndon is born with the same ability as all the women in her family, and she can taste feelings. And that ability kind of like soured her relationship with Cole, and she disappears into the forest and then comes back and has no memory of what has happened. And something similar happens again the following year, except this time the girl never comes home. And Lyndon starts to dig into what might be happening and there are some scary answers to be found. I, guys, I love horror so much and Penguin Team actually sent this to me and thank you Penguin. And it says, secrets are seeds just waiting for the right conditions to sprout. The deeper you bury them, the stronger they grow. And it's described as an Appalachian witch book. I see TikToks about Appalachia all the time and it is literally terrifying and I never want to go there and be outside because I'm scared. So yes, this is definitely a great potential and I definitely really want to get to it, especially because it was sent to me. Another potential is The Night Hunt by Alexandra Cristo. This cover is so beautiful. I love it. And it's about a monstrous girl and I love monster girl stories. This might be one of my favorite covers of the year. Honestly, I love it so much. So Atia is a monster that feeds on fear and she's the last of her kind, so she kind of hides in the shadows to escape the wrath of the gods. And then we have Silas, who is a herald who ferries the dead and carries messages. And it's kind of like a punishment for a past that he can't remember. And then some circumstances occur and Atia needs to ally with Silas and they strike a deal. He will help her escape from the monsters that are hunting her if she helps him regain his humanity. And all they need to do is kill three very powerful creatures, a vampire, a banshee, and one of the gods. And only together can they rewrite their destinies. I sound so cool. I, like I said, I love Monster Girl books. I love the cover. I love that it's like a dark, macabre fantasy romance. Sign me up. So this is definitely, you know, a potential again because a potential, but I'm really excited for this one. Another potential is The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. I'm going to an Alex E. Harrow signing in the middle of October. So like I might get to Starling House first or I might try to read this one before I go. We'll see. Um, but it, it, that's why it's potential, right? And it takes place in 1893 where there's no such thing as witches and there used to be. And you know, now if a modern woman wants any power, she must find it at the ballot box. So this kind of takes witches and suffragettes and mixes them together. And we follow three sisters that join the suffragettes movement in New Salem and they kind of mix the old forgotten words of witchcraft into maybe the powers to get the right to vote. And the sisters need to dive into the deepest magic. Okay, I love going to Salem especially and like I just love the vibe of this so much so definitely a potential hopefully I can get to it before I meet Miss Alex E. Harrow at her signing but if not there is also Starling House which is another potential only reason this might be more of a potential is because 
I only will get it halfway through the month when I go to the signing. Um, but yeah, this is about a gothic old house in Eden, Kentucky, and we follow Opal and a house that is owned by this like famous author that disappeared, and Opal kind of gets the job there, even though most people avoid that house, and she must deal with the darkness in the house. And that's like really the vaguest terms of what I know it to be, and that's kind of all I really want to know, because I want to go into it blind. But I like literally read the, what is it? The introduction or the first chapter and I was like instantly intrigued by Alex e. Harrow's writing. I think it's beautiful and I definitely feel like this is an author once I get into her stuff I'm gonna want to read everything. I might potentially also just throw Dune Print Thorn by Ava Reed on my potentials. I am reading a study in drowning right now so we'll see if I end up getting another book by them but this is her retelling of the Juniper Tree. I've talked more extensively about this in my past few videos, so you might be sick of it by now, but I heard it has cannibalism in it, and it's about these girls that are kind of sheltered by their abusive father, and they escape into the city at night, and it's like in between like technology and the old ways, and I'm really intrigued by it. So also not on this TBR, but like I have been so into alien romances on Kindle and I don't even want to put any of them on my TBR because I just want to leave it free for me to just kind of pick up whatever one I'm feeling in the moment. And I like to read on my Kindle like kind of like when I'm just too tired to read physically or um, like at work, at lunch or something like that or like in just the times when I'm like don't have the focus to read like a book book but just like want to read something like really light and fun and they are so light and fun they're usually like faded maids and have like really fun tropes and i'm just like enjoying my time reading them so i'm just not going to put a limit on that or put any sort of list towards it and just go with the flow on my alien romances and of course you'll hear more about them in my wrap up so that is it let me know what you guys think of the tbr structure of like must reads and potentials i'm hoping that this will help me conquer my tbr a little bit more because it's a little bit more focused and shorter and then you know i don't feel like i have to read like 10 book long books in a month to like achieve my tbr like i have my must reads and then things that yeah would be nice if I got to but I don't also have to I could pick up something else so I kind of like taking that pressure off of myself while still having a chance to talk a lot about a lot of different books in my TBR video so that is all please leave a little pumpkin if you've watched this far because now you know it's fall comment down below with what your October TBR plans are and what book you are most excited to read this month and have some fun read some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one